Thanks for the introduction. Um, my name is uh, Gordon Witzel. I'm part of the uh, SAP uh, Data Warehouse Product Management Team. And uh, together with my colleague, uh, Yasha Kangeser, we will uh, talk about uh, how to maximize your existing data warehouse investments with SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. Therefore, therefore I will talk about the uh, overall architecture, um, how you can uh, integrate your existing uh, data warehouse solutions into SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. And then I will hand over to Yasha and Yasha will uh, show you a demonstration um, in the system. So I will start with the general overview of SAP HANA Cloud Services. What is SAP HANA Cloud Services all about? Um, and what are the underlying technologies here? So as you can see on the slide, we have the SAP um, HANA Cloud Services as our umbrella term. And then we have the different uh, technologies. Uh, here we have the HANA Cloud as our foundation, um, our uh, HANA Foundation, which runs in the cloud, in the uh, SAP HANA Cloud, we manage your data storage, you can federate and run powerful applications. Uh, the applications which are running on SAP HANA Cloud are SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, as an example, and SAP Analytics Cloud. SAP Data Warehouse Cloud is our end-to-end -end, uh, data warehouse offering um, in the cloud, and here we are combining data management processes uh, with advanced analytics and uh, on the other side for the uh, for the visualization and for the analytics part we have the SAP uh, analytics cloud and SAP analytics cloud is running um, on SAP uh, is running as an application on uh, HANA cloud and data warehouse cloud and uh, <laughs> and combines the power of the underlying database and the data warehouse application. So with the, within the um, SAP Analytics Cloud, you can um, build your uh, stories, you can use, uh, you can create uh, <coughs> planning scenarios and predictive anal anal uh, analytics in one single solution. So. What are the what are the typical use cases for data warehouse cloud? In that session today, I will talk about uh, data warehouse cloud and the typical use cases and how to integrate existing um, data warehousing solutions into uh, into the SAP data warehouse cloud. So as you can see on this slide, we have three we ide we identified three different um, use cases, three main use cases. So I will start with the um, extend data warehousing. This is what we called uh, hybrid scenarios. And here we are offering a tight integration between your uh, on-premise uh, on scenarios like a SAP S4 HANA or a BW4 HANA. And then you can easily extend <coughs> your on-premise scenarios uh, with the cloud data and you can enhance the data models for broader insights. Uh, this is in typical scenarios for a typical scenario for your uh, line of business user. Then the line of business user can use the existing uh, data warehouse solutions uh, built in uh, in our uh, built with SAP products like the BW for HANA or the SQL based data warehouse. And this business user can um, access this data, um, this powerful data from your data warehouse, data warehouse solution and can enhance the data models for broader insights. The next use case is the so-called uh, analytics, uh, accelerate analytics part. Um, in the accelerate analytics part, line of business users as well as IT users uh, can build complete new scenarios. Uh, they can extract data, uh, replicate data, they can connect uh, different kind of source systems. And then once the connection is done, uh, then uh, the line of business users and the IT users, uh, the different user groups can start to extract, rep replicate or federate data uh, from complete different sources, be it SAP sources or non-SAP sources, be it cloud sources or on-premise sources, and can start build their uh, new models. And last but not least, we identified the uh, cross application warehousing. The cross application warehousing means that the SAP Data Warehouse Cloud acts as a uh, data, as an enterprise data warehouse. And in the, with that approach, um, all kind of users in the uh, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud can connect uh, their data without uh, duplication across all the business applications and can start modeling, uh, connect data, data cleansing, um, all the well-known um, 
features and functions uh, which are uh, which are needed in an enterprise data warehouse approach uh, are offered um, in the SAP data warehouse cloud so what are the the main the main products and what is the SAP data warehouse overall uh, strategy you can see that on the slide here we have on the right side the cloud based uh, applications and on the left side we have the on premise applications uh, on the right side we have the SAP data warehouse cloud the SAP data warehouse cloud is SAP's uh, strategic uh, public cloud product uh, offered as a software as a software as a service man fully managed by SAP to build your uh, data warehouse solution on top of SAP HANA Cloud, and on the left side, uh, on the left side, you can see our on-premise offering. Uh, here we have the SAP BW for BW for HANA, and the SAP uh, SQL Data Warehousing with both products. You can build an, um, an enterprise data warehouse uh, based on on-premise and, uh, and and in the private cloud. And in the middle, we have these so-called hybrid scenarios. We will show that later on in the demonstration with the hybrid scenarios. Uh, you can extend your existing data warehouse solution like a BW or a SQL-based data warehouse uh, with the SAP Data Warehouse Cloud uh, to, uh, to enhance uh, your data models. Interesting or important to know is that Data SAP Data Warehouse Cloud uh, will not replace on any on-premise data warehousing solutions. We will complement the existing data warehouse portfolio of SAP. So, and in the next slide, you can see the positioning of the BW and the um, SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. You can see BW for HANA as our enterprise-ready uh, um, application. Uh, based on on-premise and in the private cloud. Uh, it's a, we called it pre-packaged data warehousing solution and BW for HANA um, acts as an enterprise-wide single version of Truth. Uh, you can connect SAP data as well as non-SAP data, cloud and uh, non-cloud uh, and on-premise data. And on the other side, we have the SAP data warehouse cloud, which is our public cloud uh, offering, um, runs as a software um, as a service, it's built for um, it's built to use self-service data modeling capabilities for business users as well for uh, IT users. You can easily extend and uh, and adapt enterprise data models built as an example on your existing data warehouse like a BW for HANA and you can leverage the BW for metadata objects and the semantics um, and enhance the data models uh, and enhance the data models in the SAP data warehouse cloud. With both products you can uh, you can connect to the underlying foundation, you can connect to the underlying sources and then you can build your uh, analytics scenarios on top of uh, on top of these solutions. What is the uh, how is the integration looks like between BW, uh, BW data and the um, SAP uh, data warehouse cloud. <clears throat> In the end, uh, we have two different ways um, to, to integrate BW and BW4 HANA into uh, the SAP data warehouse cloud. Uh, first of all, we have the federated uh, and replicated data consumption scenario. Here, here you can see that on the slide. Uh, you have the possibilities. Uh, you have the possibility to connect to an BW system as well as to a BW for HANA system um, and to replicate or federate uh, the data uh, coming from these uh, data warehousing solutions. Um, here we are offer we are offering the. Uh, possibilities to use the operational data provisioning framework um, ODP based it's based on an SAP ABAP connection and you can use the external SAP HANA views based on the SAP HANA connection and can connect to queries which are uh, which are provided as an info provider uh, info providers and info objects. Um, and the other option we are we are offering is the uh, federated replicated metadata model integration uh, coming with BW for HANA model transfer. So this means we have a tight integration uh, or tighter integration uh, between BW for HANA and SAP Data Warehouse Cloud because with SAP. Uh, BW for HANA, it is possible to to use the so-called metadata model integration. This means 
You can connect to BW queries, um, info providers and info objects on a semantic level. That's important to understand. Uh, there are some differences, of course, in uh, support of the entities. Um, it depends on the uh, on the scenario, on the location and the use, uh, usage of the OLAP engine. Um, you can um, access the data on a remote way or you can replicate the data. Um, in the next slide, I will show you the, the integration of the data consumption scenario. This means that uh, BW or the underlying data warehouse acts as an um, as a data layer, so to say. So in that in that example, um, you can access your uh, your data coming from the underlying uh, data warehouse solution uh, in the SAP data warehouse cloud via the so-called remote tables, and the remote tables are uh, pointing to the uh, underlying BW system based on an RFC or on SQL connection. So this means we are using the operational um, data provisioning or you can connect um, to, uh, to an SAP um, external uh, generated HANA view based on the uh, BW or BW4 artifacts like query as an info provider, info provider or info objects. And then you can use the SQL connection and con can connect to the data um, sitting on your underlying uh, BW uh, or <coughs> BW system. So, and last but not least, uh, we have the tight integration or the tightest integration between BW4 HANA um, and the SAP Data Warehouse Cloud via the so-called model transfer connection. Yasha will show you that um, in the in the demo in detail. Um, here we provide uh, the metadata models to the Data Warehouse Cloud. So this means in the SAP Data Warehouse Cloud, you can reuse your uh, existing semantics built in a uh, BW query or an info provider or an info object. And then you can start uh, staging these scenarios in BW for HANA based on data and virtual models. Uh, we are offer uh, or we plan to offer uh, to transfer BW queries as native data warehouse entities based on um, KPIs and analytic models. We plan to support uh, BW analysis authorizations um, that we will support your existing uh, BW authorization concept in the SAP Data Warehouse Cloud that, that, you, that you can ensure uh, that the user can see uh, the data uh, which the user is uh, authoriza out, uh, authorized for. Um, and we plan to introduce the hierarchy support uh, for, for um, accessing the hierarchies based on the BW for HANA system. With saying that, um, I will hand over to Yasha and Yasha will jump into the system and um, show you um, a demonstration. All right, thank you, um, Gordon. Um, like Gordon said, I'll be showing you um, how you can now actually um, consume data from a BW system in Dataverse Cloud. And we'll basically walk our way from the bottom to the top. Um, if you think back again to that slide that demonstrated the different levels um, Gordon talked about, like the info object and info provider and um, BW query, how that can be consumed in AWS Cloud um, in a remote scenario, that is what I'll be showing um, to you today. Um, so like I said, I'll start from bottom to top and therefore I'll just take as an example um, a characteristic, as you can see it here. So I just built a very um, simple product um, category and product um, characteristic example, as you can see it. Um, so what that includes as well is not only um, master data like attributes, but also some texts. And that is what we'll be consuming first in Data Warehouse Cloud. Um, that was the wrong one. Okay, so you maybe want to cut out this from moving to here. <laughs> So in Dataverse Cloud, um, I'm already within a specific space I created. I call it BW for HANA Enterprise um, Space. And in that space, I also already connected the remote BW system I was just um, showing to you. So when browsing the connections created in that space, you see that there's one BW for HANA connection. And I'll just be looking for the 
products, um, master data, um, texts I would like to use in a federated scenario now on in AWS Cloud. Um, so uh, the, because this is now an SDI other connection, I not only see the extractors, but only other stuff like um, BAPI procedures and other tables. But because I really want to work with my characteristic, um, I'll be browsing or drilling down into the extractors and BW. And then because it starts with the B into the B folder. And um, here I'm looking for the product and the product um, categories, uh, which are up here. And as you can see, um, actually the object is now exposed on more like a table level because for the same object I created in or on the BW side, which was the product category or the product itself, I actually get um, two entries back. Um, one for the attributes, which you can identify by the dollar $p um, suffix and one for the text um, identified by the dollar $t suffix. And this is what I would now like to reuse in Dataverse Cloud. So I select the four entries, I hit next, and then I can um, give it some more meaningful names like product attributes, um, we have the product texts, we have the product category attributes, and we have the text for the categories too. I just leave the technical names as they are, I think that's okay. Um, I again get the information about what kind of object that is and where it's coming from, and then I can just import the data. Let me try that again. You may just want to show the successful result, hopefully. Okay. So that worked, all good. Um, and now what I still have to tell the system is how these actually relate um, to each other. So we, we know that this is, um, based on the name, we know that this is our product attributes and this is our product text. So we'll be joining these two. And uh, because the product, as you saw it in the uh, modeling tools, is actually compounded to the product um, categories. Actually, I made a mistake here. This is the product categories text. Let me remove that. And this is the product text. So I'll be joining that. Um, because that is, no, it's gone. Okay. Um, Okay, just once more, sorry for that. So like I said, it's good that we do it by teams, right? So we have all the cutting magic at hand. That's pretty good. So there we go. Right. Um, so now as you can see, the system imported all of the um, four entities, but as you can see, they are not yet connected. So the Dataverse Cloud apparently doesn't know about how the product attributes and product text and product category attributes and product category text um, relate to each other. Um, so that's what I just have to um, tell it. So I take the product text and join it with the product category attributes. And because um, the product category is actually a um, compound further to the product um, itself, I just um, join these two. Again, take the product attributes and join that uh, because I need the text for these as well with the product texts. Um, so by doing that, I actually already created um, like the same kind of master data entity products uh, as you saw it on the, on the data warehouse or BW4 side. So I just give it a meaningful name, set the type as dimension because I know it's a dimension. I'll be defining a simple hierarchy um, because I know that the uh, products um, are basically uh, are compound to the product category. Um, that's why I just specified as the product category um, being the father of the, the product itself. Um, I could now go ahead and give it some more meaningful names um, instead of these real technical ones, but I'll um, skip that for now. And one thing I have to do is um, to get to make this um, a valid model. As you can see, I have to make few adjustments to um, the names because there are a few duplicates in here um, coming from the text. So I'll just rename 
the Langu column to um, Langu or product PC Langu for product category, and I do the same for um, the short text. So now all the error messages are gone, and if I now do a data preview, um, the data is fetched from the BW system, and what I build is basically a virtual product dimension based on the master data that is um, stored in, in BW, as you can see. So I get all the information that are stored on the BW set. So I'm going to deploy that one so that I can later on use it um, in the analytic model um, where I consume the data from the provider that is also part of the BW system. So that's um, an example for how we consume the, um, or how we can consume master data in terms of attributes and texts. Um, just to give you an outlook, um, you might be wondering, okay, what about hierarchies? Um, why wouldn't I see the age table of the characteristics? Um, that is um, coming in the near future. Um, so you might want to watch out for the latest uh, data provisioning agent release 2.4.2.5. Uh, once that is released, you will also be able to consume any hierarchy data stored in the H table of an characteristic in Dataverse Cloud 2. Um, next thing or next level is the um, composite provider um, that is um, still underneath the query, but also uses the master data that we have already um, imported on a virtual level to Dataverse Cloud. So I'll just be um, consuming the data data from this composite provider in a virtual fashion in Dataverse Cloud 2. So as you can see, that composite provider provides some sales data um, of different regions, and I want to now make that um, available to Dataverse Cloud. So again, I'll be creating a new graphical view, and I browse the connected BW Fana system. And again, we go to Extractors, BW, and let's wait a second. Because the compass provider starts with a B. Let's take a look into the B's folder. And um, there it is. Where is it? This one, I think it is. Yeah. I'm just comparing the names again. Yeah, that is the same one. All right. So that is the right one. Um, for any providers, you can tell that this is an info provider because of the dollar F. Um, as compared to the dollar $P or dollar $T, or in, in, in the future dollar $H table. So we will be importing that. It already uh, chose a well, nice business name for us. That's OK. I'll leave it for now and do the import. And now we already got the data or got the imported remote table in here. And um, because this is now rather um, transactional or fact data, I set the type as analytical data set because that allows me to um, define attributes and measures. And scrolling down, there are a few measures in my model, um, like the, the gross amount, um, which I'll be, I can change as a measure. At least this should be. Ah, it's a key, okay. Everything is a key. Okay, so you want to cut that out too, I guess. I just make this adjustment and then I just um, continue from where I start. Just a second. It's because it's a key, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I don't know what makes everything a key. Some room for improvements. <laughs> As always. <laughs> Getting better and better every time. <laughs> All right. So well, there should be only two keys, one key, two key. Um, so, uh, okay. Now I can also define some uh, measures in here, like the um, text amount, for example, I'll choose the net amount too. And there's the gross amount as a third measure. All right, and that's actually it, because um, the data model is already fully prepared on the BW Fana side. Um, I currently don't have to add anything else here. What I could do is, if I connect it to additional systems, if I uploaded data locally to Dataverse Cloud, I could now include this in here as well. So this is like a nice um, showcase how you can 
extend the data stored in APW system with additional data you connected to in Dataverse Cloud. Um, so imagine I connected to some um, Azure or AWS data lake, um, so that would show up as an additional connection in here. I could then just drag over any data from there and combine it uh, with the data coming from the BW system and therefore just um, build on whatever data is stored in BW and, and enhance it in a nice way. Um, so for deploying the view, I just give it um, some meaningful name, BW sales data for now, and um, I save it. I don't deploy it yet because what I want to do is that I also want to make use of the uh, master data dimension I previously imported, and I'll do that switching by switching to the association view, um, where I would associate any master data or any other dimensions um, to the um, data view I, I just built. So I just take over the product, and um, as you can see, it gets automatically connected um, because it matches the names of the of the two involved joint partners. And as you can see, that matches pretty well. So I leave it as it is, and I just deploy the model. So what I could now do, uh, because I already created an, an analytical data set based on the data that is stored in this info provider, I could now go ahead and use the story builder to actually build any uh, reports on top of the data. Um, and that would be one example um, how to make the data from APW system available to um, Dataverse Cloud. Um, but you might not always want to um, entry the BW system on an info provider level, but probably you also want to um, do the very same with um, query metadata or with query data that is um, stored in the BW system, uh, which is like the, the last level we want to take a look at in today's session. Um, so switching to the BW query that's um, for the sake of um, just demonstrating that is built on the very same composite provider as you can see. Um, I just take the query and now there's a difference um, compared to the composite provider and the characteristic in terms of consuming that in Dataverse Cloud because this one, um, if I now go ahead and create again a third view for consuming the um, query metadata, the query is not visible out of the box as it was the case for the info provider or the characteristics. Um, because just for demonstrating that to you, if I again drill down, because the query also started with a B, I just take a look into the B folder again and just search for the query. Um, there's no result, obviously, because what I have to do first, I have to expose the query as an info provider on the BW side, um, because via the ABAP SDI adapter, only BW queries um, that have been exposed as an info provider are currently consumable on in Dataverse Cloud. Um, that will change with what Gordon said uh, when talking about the BW for HANA model transfer connection. Um, so that is a completely different scenario then where these steps are not required anymore. But for the pure data consumption scenario that was um, that to Gordon talked about um, in the other slide, um, if you want to consume the query, you have to make sure that the query is exposed as an info provider. So one way to do that is um, in the BW backend in transaction RSRT, you enter the query and then select the in the property, select the queries used as an info provider setting. Um, there might be some queries where that is not possible due to the features um, used by the query, for example, things like two structures or cell definitions. Um, if you cannot expose the query, it, the system will tell you that it is not possible and it also will tell you why it is not possible. Um, so you might want to then um, either change the query and remove everything that um, prevents the query from being exposed as an info provider, or you just copy it um, so that you don't um, destroy the original query and from the copy remove everything um, un until you can expose the query as an info provider. So just um, set the flag and confirm the pop-up. And if we are now going back and just to search again, you can see, okay, that is, it showed up because now we actually to Dataverse Cloud, now the query looks as an info provider, not as a query anymore, but when accessing the data in a remote scenario, we'll um, consume the data from, from the query itself, um, not from the underlying info provider. So I just name it query sales data. Um, for now, and import it.
And as you can see, now it got imported. I can consume the data um, that is stored in there. If there were any calculations, uh, like calculated key figures in the query model, I um, would or could access the data um, here too. And then again, just as I did it for the info provider, I would now go ahead and um, change it to an, an analytical data set in this case, because it doesn't contain any um, master data. It's like a transactional um, data model. I would define the measures again, uh, like, these, uh, like this. And then um, I could, again, add additional data from any other connections that I uh, may have created previously. Um, I could associate uh, master data of the system, just like we did it um, for the info provider view that we created before. And um, therefore, again, build on the data that is coming from the BW system, but again, not consuming the data from the info provider, um, but this time consuming the query uh, result as we build it in, in Dataverse Cloud. And because I now made this an analytical data set, I built the measures or I defined the measures, I can also consume this now in the integrated analytics cloud um, story builder in Dataverse Cloud. Um, so that's everything I want to demonstrate to you today. So um, we basically saw like how we can consume master data attribute and text data. We um, got an idea how you can consume data that is stored in an info provider in BW, not only concerning composite providers, um, but basically any info provider that you can create on the BW site. And um, I demonstrated to you how you can also consume query data or the result set of a query in Dataverse Cloud uh, once you expose that as an info provider. Uh, one remark there, you might um, also want to expose the query as an old data service, or if possible, you can also make use of the external HANA view feature. Um, so by exposing the entities on the BW site as an external HANA view, you can also access the data um, not via the SDI ABAP adapter, but if you created an HANA connection to the HANA the BW system is running on, you would also have the possibility um, to consume in the end the very same data um, just via different technology, like um, using SQL instead of the um, ABAP SDI adapter, if you wanted to.